Hey everybody, today I wanted to cover the subject of using barriers and specifically we're going to talk about uh, kneeling and uh, basically pieing the corner, kneeling, standing, you know, whatever. I'm just going to demonstrate standing, uh, you know, to save time and stuff like that, but uh, we're going to talk about pieing the corner and a technique a lot of people like to use. There's uh, like in reloads, malfunctions, whatever. So when you're pieing a corner, typically you're trying to inch your way across, uh, lower your likelihood of actually taking incoming. You want to be the first one to put those rounds on. And typically that means just working with what you've got if there is an exposure of your target. Uh, so if there's a foot or a, an arm or something like that, you want to engage them as, as quick as possible. And yes, uh, uh, it's typically a better thing to go for uh, CNS shots. However, typically the CNS is in line with the body and therefore it, you got to work with what you got in order to start getting those hits. You want to be the first one to get those hits. So anyways, uh, with that engagement, typically if you uh, hit somebody and they stay put or whatever, maybe you can inch yourself out more. That's enough of a distraction and then you can inch yourself out more. And if, you, uh, if that threat moves, or um, the, the big subject we're going to cover is if that threat moves and uh, what you can do if you need to reload or uh, what have you uh, or clear a malfunction. There's two schools of thought and I'm going to demonstrate both. So number one is to own the territory and not give it up unless you actually need to. And this requires you to constantly look down range. There is no time. Uh, seconds, milliseconds can count uh, because that's reaction. Typically in order for us to fully process the OODA loop, the average time is half a second. A lot can happen in half a second. So uh, typically somebody that's hunting is going to, uh, going to uh, uh, it's better to be on offense than defense. So it, you want to act over react. And if you're watching and you're reloading or anything like that, you're reacting. So you're going to need your eyes on there to process the information if there's any movement or you see a shadow coming or whatever. But you need to, if you're going to own the territory. But even if you're not, you still need to watch. So that's the one principle that I'm going to uh, kind of demonstrate is basically owning the ground and keeping your eyes on the threat. So let me go ahead and demonstrate real quick. Okay, so that was uh, that was owning the ground, and as you saw, I didn't move. I kept the ground that I had. I didn't chase. I just kept the ground that I had during the reload, and I kept it down here out of my line of sight. I, if there was a problem with the gun, I could simply just look down really quick and still maintain some peripheral vision, but the problem is anytime you're breaking sight, you are concentrating more on this, and the time it takes to realize that there's something in your peripheral, concentrate on, analyze what it is, and then react, that's precious time. So keeping your focus on any movement here is, is a better idea. So get used to uh, not looking at your gun when you're reloading. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you basically what would cost you, uh, cost you territory on pine the corner, but typically it's something people like to do is just to get out of the danger anyways. So uh, this one is going to be basically getting back behind cover to handle your reload. The problem with this is typically uh, people that like to look at their gun while they're reloading like to do this instead of, uh, instead of owning the ground. I'm not saying it's a bad method, but here's a problem. You still need to watch your surroundings because even if you disappear behind cover and there's no more threat of you being there, that could be the time that people advance. There are plenty of police shootings out there that actually showed this happening where they went behind the vehicle to uh, uh, look for another area or whatever, they were behind cover, the assailant did not see them, therefore they decided to rush the position. If the officer was still staying out there and keeping an eye out, he could react a little better, I believe, but that's that's armchair commandoing and that's kind of uh, Monday morning quarterbacking uh, that situation, but uh, there's plenty of times where people have been able to react uh, under those kinds of conditions because they kept their eyes, they, did, they kept the ground, they kept their eyes on the threat. So, and they were maintaining their uh, awareness of what was going on around them, even though they were changing position or reloading or anything. So let me go ahead and demonstrate anyways.
So as you saw there, I gave up ground. It was very quick because I can look. I can basically maintain my situational awareness and reload. It's a good mus muscle memory that I have. It's very hard for me to screw up my reload unless I'm working with a new pistol or whatever. But typically, if you're going to be going to an engagement, you probably want to be practiced with your firearm first, right? So you want to be familiar with your firearm. So there's nothing wrong with basically being able to reload without looking at the gun. Typically, that's the best way to uh, be able to plan and react uh, or basically get going again uh, quicker because you already are able to plan things out. You already have your eyes on what you're going to shoot at. So you're able to quickly get yourself back into a natural point of aim without having to reacquire as you're going out. That can typically cause people to miss on their uh, reloads from what I've seen. And that's a very common trait. You you may lose a little bit of time if you're a shot time a shot timer queen, but uh, that's just my two cents on uh, working with a barrier. You can decide what you like. If you're going to ask my personal opinion, I, I like both. There's situations where both are necessary, but the biggest key to this is working around a barrier. You're using that barrier for cover. Therefore, at any time, your cover could be compromised by a maneuvering uh, target. Therefore, the whole principle is to maintain situational awareness. And typically, if I'm going to pull back from cover, it's because I'm trying to reanalyze the situation. There may be other threats. There may It may be a time to communicate. It might take longer because I'm dealing with a malfunction, and therefore I might want to move. But it gives me a time to reanalyze. However, if I'm keeping my ground, it means that I am dedicated to uh, taking, that, uh, taking that ground and uh, going after the target. So you got to decide what you're going to be doing tactically in that situation but have both in your toolbox. But again, I'm gonna beat a dead horse here on purpose. Do not sit there and look at your gun while you're reloading. Milliseconds can count in these situations. So uh, that's my recommendation. That's the basic principle with all of this. Each one can have their uses. So practice, get proficient, leave a comment below, like this video, and you guys have a good one.